Hello there, I'm Martin and welcome to Turtle JavaScript. JWT stands for JSON Web Token. JSON Web Token is a standard RFC 7519 for exchanging cryptographically signed JSON data. It is probably the most popular current standard of authorization on the web, especially when it comes to microservices and distributed architecture. GWT is used to implement what is called an access token or identity token. It holds claims that allow your services to authorize the users in a stateless manner. That means that the access token lets your services know that the user can use them without a need for stateful session management. But what is actually GWT? JWT is simply a signed JSON intended to be shared between two parties. The signature is used to verify the authenticity of the token to make sure that none of the JSON data were tampered with. The data of the token themselves are not encrypted. The generated token might look like this. The token is just base64 code. If you decode it, it would show you the original JSON and its signature. This already tells us that this token uses HS256 algorithm and stores ID while showing us the exact data stored. The random characters at the end are the signature of HS256. The signature allows you to verify the authenticity of the token, but the data and the claims that you add are not encrypted unless you encrypt them yourself. This is a working example of creating JWT in JavaScript. I'm using the JSON Web Token Library. You can see that I'm defining a private key for ES512 algorithm, that's the best algorithm for asymmetric encryption available within the JSON Web Token Library. And I'm also showing the data that we will be adding into the token. Those data are not encrypted, again only the signature is encrypted. We are defining the issuer, the subject, the audience, expiration, not before, and the JWT ID and also we are adding some of our own data. When you call the sign using the data private key and defining the algorithm, you will get the base64 code of your JWT token. The method of authenticating users does not change with JWT. You can still use a username and password, although you should use something more secure, like two-factor authentication. The difference is only in how you manage the user authorization how you let your service know that the user has permission to do something. In your web application, your code needs to manage how the token is stored in the browser. And your code also needs to manage how it is passed with every request to the server, for example by using authorization bearer header. On the server, you verify the token signature and get access to the JSON data directly, which is much simpler for distributed architectures. This is a working example of JWT verification. We are again using the JSON Web Token Library. Within the services, we are always using public key. Public key is public for the services that are using it, but not on the internet. Private key is used only in the authentication service that produces the original JWT. We have an example of a token that we have received as part of the request to the service, and we are calling the verify. You can see that we are using the token and public key and that we are defining the allowed algorithm, the ES512. As part of the verification, we are also checking the audience and issuer. If anything fails here, an error will be thrown. And as a result of a verification, we get the original JSON that has been attached to the, to the JWT. Again, keep in mind that the JSON data are not encrypted, we are only verifying the signature. In case that someone would decode the base64 token and change any of the data in the JSON, during the verification we would receive an error, because the signature also contains a hash of the original data. That's how we make sure that no one can tamper with them. That is all the magic that there is to it. With this information, you should be able to make a working solution. However, there are also a few considerations for your implementation that you should think about. How do classic session management and JWT approach differ? What should you store in the JWT? Where to store the JWT token in the browser? How to implement refresh tokens? And of course, what encryption algorithm should you use? For these topics, 
look at my existing videos or sign up for the future ones. Alright, see you next time and have a nice day.